This is the Work Tough Gear Nomad EDC, designed by Zeke Minacho. If you're interested in hearing my thoughts on this small but very capable knife, keep watching. All right, just before we get started, I want to thank Vic at Work Tough Gear for sending me the Nomad EDC so that I could share it with you. I also want to thank Zeke because Zeke and I spent quite a bit of time chatting about this design and uh, he gave me some really good insights into it so that I could share them with you. All right, so what we're going to do is I'll bring the camera in. We'll focus on the knife. I will give you the specifications for it and then I'm going to talk about the design, why it looks the way it does and of course we're going to do some testing with it. All right just before we take a closer look at the knife itself I just wanted to share this with you because I really this is special right? Listen to that the snap as it goes into that kydex sheath. So I'm just going to take a quick look at the kydex sheath and then we'll get back to looking at the knife. So this is absolutely typical of the work that Victor at Work Tough Gear does with Kydex. He is a master of it. Now I know there's he's not the only person is, but you know, a good knife deserves a good sheath and Vic knows how to put the two together to make a complete package. So I just want to show you this and declare it and get it out of the way. This is just a Frankenstein mock-up that I put on the sheath so that I could hang it from my belt for today. I'll explain why. The two straps over the side is intended for wearing this in scout carry around the back, which I don't think I could do because I don't think I can reach around back or on the front and I did carry it this way for quite a while on my belt around town very discreetly I liked that and around the house so that I could have it at hand to do testing. The other way for carrying a knife like this in this type of a sheath is with an ulti clip and I have an ulti clip on order just hasn't arrived yet and the ulti clip will fasten on here then this can be put down inside of a pocket and the clip will hold on to the outside of the pocket so it's discreetly in your pocket and ready for deployment at any time and uh, yeah that's the thing about an EDC everyday carry knife this is a worthy replacement for a folding knife and I carried it that way for a while during my testing and very much liked it. Okay it's a little bit bulkier than most folding knives but it is much more capable because of course it is a fixed blade. So let's just bring the knife back in. Let's go through the specifications quickly. I will be putting it all in the video description of course because look at this. How do I describe all the different shapes and features of this knife. This is going to take a little bit of time because I wasn't quite sure what to make of it. I was very drawn to it. I really, really wanted to test it out and thank you Vic for sending it to me. But to, in order to understand all the features in this design, I had to reach out to Zeke to get some insights and Zeke was really, really good at sharing his knowledge with me. All right, let's go over the specifications for it. Obviously, it is a full tang fixed blade knife. Overall length from tip to pommel, 7.6 inches or 193 millimeters. Blade length is 3.5 inches or 89 millimeters. The blade thickness, 3.7 millimeters or 0.145 of an inch. So fairly thick for such a short blade. It is a high saber grind, nice and high, right? Almost all the way to the top, just a little bit of flat up here with a polished convex secondary and that's something that Vic is known for. They're just absolutely marvelous. They last forever and they, they look amazing and uh, yeah they're really really strong on the edge. It has a modified tanto shape on it. I'll explain a little bit more of that in a few minutes time. Blade steel is Bowler N690 and it has a cryo treatment that brings it to a 59 to 61 on the Rockwell scale. I have not had to put this to stones. I will say I have stropped it quite a few times just to keep the edge up after doing a lot of testing with it. But even at that hardness of 61, if, it, if it, this knife has reached that high, then uh, that makes for a very, very hard edge. And sometimes the worry is, of course, when it gets really hard, that it'll be prone to chipping. Nothing here. That is just smooth all the way down. Really, really nice. Okay, this blade, now there are a number of different styles of this blade with different finishes on the blade itself as well as different materials. So this has a black and brown uh, G10 material and a light tumble finish on the blade itself. Okay, weight 5.5 ounces or 156 grams and if you add in the sheath it goes up to 6.6 .6 ounces or 187 grams. All right let's go through each of the features. I'll be going through the features on the blade then on the handle and of course how they work in conjunction with each other. So let's start with the obvious. 
reverse tanto at the tip. So it's not a clip point per se. I mean, you could classify that way. It looks like it has a swedge, an unsharpened swedge right at the, t at the forward portion of the blade. But Zeke refers to this as a reverse tanto. So what's the point of that? Well, as you know, most tanto knives, especially the American style tanto, is more like a chisel grind with two edges, one there and one just about here somewhere. Uh, debatable whether or not that's of advantage to, first, uh, to bushcraft, but uh, that's for another video. This accomplishes the strength of a tanto without any compromise to the blade itself. And I'm going to try to get it in at an angle because as the blade flat comes out to this point, it changes. So there's actually a transition right down there. Is that showing up on the camera? Hard to tell in the sunlight here, where it starts to thin out again towards the edge. What that does is it gives you most or almost well a very strong blade let's put it that very strong blade that still has tremendous piercing capability so a great little piercing edge on it as everything comes towards the tip yet maintains a good amount of metal right behind the tip so you don't have to worry about damage and uh, and prying or anything else like that yeah so all right that's the reverse tanto on it what else can we say about this look at the sweep this thing is just one continuous sweep all the way. There are no flats to this knife at all. And uh, it did take a little bit getting used to slicing through wood. That's, that is true. I'll, I'll share with you when I, when I go to do some demonstrations why that is the case. But look at where the center point of this is. It's actually below the level of the handle, which means is when you're holding your hand on it and you're pushing down like using it in the kitchen, and I did for quite a bit. I actually prepared a number of meals with this. What you have is your contact point above the center uh, above the cutting surface so you don't have to hold it tip forward you can actually hold it straight down and your knuckles are not going to come in contact with the cutting board very much like a kitchen knife or a chef's knife might be as well the other thing this continuous curve with the belly the strongest part of the belly here is you can use it better for draw cuts like this so again for cooking what i found is you know you, you can rock it like you might a chef's knife, but you can also pull this across material. And not just meat or vegetables in the kitchen, but just about anything. I found that there's actually a strong slicing action provided by that when using it with wood. It does take a little bit of getting used to, as I mentioned a minute ago, but it's there. That deep saber, that secondary, even though it is three and a half millimeters, 3.7 millimeters thick, it's still a very, very slicey little knife. Now, there's one thing I wanted to mention about the tip is it is above the center line of the knife, but not my much. Can you see that? Let's just say that is where my finger is now is the center. So it is just above the center, meaning this is still, and I was practicing with that today just for, for well, just to make sure that it would, I could verify it in, in practice, and that is that it actually does drill quite well as you roll it and roll it and roll it around. But then you can clean out your drilling very well with just that, with the belly right here. Yeah, so it really works very nicely. It is a diminutive blade and the handle is actually longer than the blade. That's great for somebody with a hand size like mine. Uh, one more feature on the blade itself, two more features, I guess, probably worth mentioning. One is this divot. Yes, it is meant for your thumb. And, you know, I, I can't say that I use a knife like this a lot, but I do find in carving, I do. So between the choils, so here's where they start to work in conjunction, between the choil here and the divot on top, I actually do use this for carving. And you can do some fine carving with this, again, because of the way the tip comes up to that fine point, you can actually do carving. And the last thing on the blade before we move on, does it have a 90 degree spine? Oh yes, yes it does. It will scrape everything that you want it to scrape, from fat wood to wood to bark to anything else, as we'll demonstrate in a few minutes time. Okay, let's move on to the handle. This is where this thing really is different is <laughs> different is that the way to say it the best way to say it oh by the way i did put a little paracord with a stopper knob on the end of it reason being is uh because my xl hands you may or may not find this necessary but i find what i can do is with that stopper knob it's almost like having a lengthened portion of the handle itself i can actually use it it's great for pulling it out of the sheath and uh yeah it's uh, i suppose it's decorative as well but it's functional for me because it allows me just a little bit more purchase on the knife itself Okay, look how thick this is. There is a very slight palm swell through here, but a very pronounced one through here. But at the same time, it's got like a sway back going on here. What's that all about, right? Well, it does rest into 
the palm of my hand when I hold it like this. And it does work for when my thumb is in the divot. Everything, I don't know how to show this, the way it sits in my hand. So even though it's a little odd looking, it does seem to follow the curves of my palm and fit in in most ways I would hold the knife. It's not perfect, I'll, I'll talk to that in a few minutes time, but it's pretty darn good, just the same. It's, you know, the, the width of this has worked fairly well for me. Uh, okay, there are a couple of thumb divots right here and they are intended for use like this, which is great, or in reverse grip, which is also great. So you have some purchase on the knife and some control with your thumb. Let's address it right now. It is not the best reverse grip pull carving knife like I might for a chest lever cut. Not bad, but not the best because it does have a bit of a beak right here and that rests right in the center of my palm or it does ride in my palm so that when there's a lot of pressure on the blade itself, it does dig in here a little bit. A longer handle or one with less of a beak right here wouldn't do that. Not a deal breaker at all because when I consider the mission of this knife, the intended use of this knife, it's not a wasn't designed specifically as a bushcraft knife. I just like to put all my knives that I test to bushcraft tasks. So that's my primary use for them. But uh, yeah, we'll address what its primary use really is. Well, I think it's right in the name, isn't it? EDC, Everyday Carry. One last thing to show you on this, and it does have a pronounced extended pommel down here. It's not sharp, you can't do much with it, but you can hammer on it. And I did that for doing small splits. I don't know that I would want to hold it in reverse grip because it's such a small knife, but I can hold it in reverse grip so I can stab with it with relative confidence and my hand won't move forward on it because of the depth of that choil and the way my fingers grab this curve here. But it's, you know, sometimes you think of this as a bit of a compromise. It's, I don't want to think of it as a compromise. It fits within its mission very, very well and then it steps outside of its mission and does tasks of a larger knife reasonably well. Okay, so that's pretty much the knife in design from end to end. If there are as many different features I can show you, the only way to, to explain to how it works for me is actually to demonstrate it. All right, so I like to stay with the, what I call the standard demonstrations for knives that I use for bushcraft, such as batoning, making a, a tent peg, uh, a feather stick, and scraping. Those are just the basic ones. If you can do each of those with your knife, then you've got the bases covered. There are many, many variations of it, but those are the ones that I like to try the knife with. Okay, let's be realistic. This is not a batoning knife. Look how small that is at three and a half inches. You're not going to baton very much with this. It's plenty strong, as you'll see. It's not the strength, it's the length. But still, if you can span it, you should be able to baton it, right? Okay, so we can. Let's see, I want to make sure I'm going to stay in frame with this. One of the nice things, all right, here, here's, I'll point this out, and I'll point it out again when we go to do feather sticks. The center, because this is a continuous curve all the way along here, there is actually a center point, and it's a little more pointed, even though it's round, more pointed than it is anywhere else on the blade. So any, at any point, you've got a relatively small contact area. What that allows for is it likes to, it'll give you a place to start out for batoning. This is maple, by the way, about a year old, so still plenty of strength in this. And that's the only issue right there, right? Of course, is you don't have a whole lot to hit. But of course, still do it, right? Still, still do it. Okay, what I'm going to do is finish batoning these down so I can get some pieces for the next demonstration and then we'll go on from there. All right, so my next demonstration is turning this piece of that round into a tent peg. Uh, I like doing tent pegs for demonstrations because they have a couple of skills involved. One is cross batoning and notching, and then of course putting a point on the other end. Again, representative. Now this does have a bit of a wobble to it, but I think it'll still... I just don't want it to bounce all over the place when I hit it. So just a couple of light taps to create a stop cut. I'm only going to go in about a third of the way on the branch. So there is my stop cut right there. And now of course it's just cleaning that stop cut out to create a L7. Notch. 
I like doing that, rolling the knife in because of that contact area, it's small. So you can actually clean out a notch like this really well. And then if you really need to clean it out with the tip, you can get in there and work that as well for other types of notching, maybe like a beak on a pot crane or something like that. All right, so that was simple enough. All right, let me set back up and we'll do the chest lever to get a point on the end of it. Okay, we're gonna put a point on the end of my tent peg uh, because this one has bark on it. I'll have the extra little demonstration of just slicing off the end to show you how well it slices in a forward grip like this. Just hogs material off very well, but let's do it in reverse grip because of course that's what this demonstration is all about. Make sure I can stay in film this time. That was about a third of the stick right there. It does have that continuous curve on this, really has a lot of slicing capability. At the same time, you have to keep control over it because if you're not used to that continuous curve, your knife will want to move down the cut maybe faster than you were anticipating. So it has real advantages, but a little bit of a learning curve on it. That's it. That's all there is to it, to creating a tent peg. All right, I was just going through the splits that I had uh, batoned out of that larger round, looking for one that didn't have too many knots, like this little knot right here. I'm gonna to have to work with the knot, but leaving it at this end means that I should get most of this flat area to make feathers out of. And as long as I don't hit the knot, I shouldn't lose the feathers. So I'll try to start up high enough and work my way down. Nice straight grain piece of maple. Can't say that I've mastered this, and I did say that you do have to put in a little bit of practice on this knife because of that continuous curve. But once you do get some experience with it, well, let's just see. Let's just see what happens, and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Getting the right angle is what it's all about, right? Getting that angle and trying not to lose your curls in the process. You want to keep at least the first few on to act as an anchor for the rest that follow. And that curve, what I find is if I start at the center point right about here and then work towards the tip as opposed to starting further back, I seem to have more control. I don't have a whole lot to work with in terms of blade, but I do have more control. All right, I seem to be gaining some momentum here. Now, if you can master the angle, or if I can master the angle of the knife, whether it's backwards like this or forwards like this, you not only get to control the direction, but also the thickness of your curls. I tend to do it this way more often than not, but uh, the real control comes towards the tip, that last little portion. If you can actually get practice with it. And you can only really do that with a short knife like this, four inches. This is what, three and a half. So, you know, at around four inches, that's where you can really get lots of control at the tip. If you start working with a longer knife, trying to get little, little, little tiny curls like this, it's much more difficult because it's more of a lever and further out and the risk of knocking them off gets greater. I mean, you master it with practice, of course, but you can just with work a lot easier with a smaller knife. Let's just roll it over and go down the, the outside here. Yeah, all right, that's pretty good. It's doing, I think, really, really nice for curls. Now, I wouldn't call this the best feather stick, but in terms of demonstrating curls, I think it's working pretty good. All right, instead of Spending all kinds of time trying to create a massive feather stick here. I think I'll call it quits at this point and move on to scraping. One last thing that I think is worth mentioning though. I still have XL hands. That means this is still a small grip. And what I have to do is remember as I'm holding onto it, not to hold on too tight or it'll tire my hand out regardless. So if I remember that, I actually loosening up allows me more control and I can get finer finer little curls just by having it loose in my hand 
letting the edge do the work, especially down at the tip. Little tiny, little, little, little tiny curls like those. All right, now let's move on to scraping. So of course it is windy out here and trying to shelter what I'm doing with the wind. I started carrying a little piece of leather. It was just a piece of leather from an old project that, uh, get rid of that root there. Uh, comes in handy for a number of things and one of the things is for a base. So if I was doing scrapings with fat wood or something and I wanted to transfer them from where I was doing them into a fire pit, a little piece of leather is a nice piece thing to use to keep everything collected as well as protect the edge of your knife should you uh, go a little too far onto a rock like what I have underneath here. But I'm going to use an old piece of birch bark to collect my scrapings up today as long as it doesn't fall apart on me. Uh, I took a piece of that feather stick, took the curls off, actually there's the curls off the feather stick, because I wanted to show scraping with the back of the knife on a piece of wood, because you can do that, of course, and create combustible little pieces of wood, like those little tiny feathers, which are just so nice and light, which will catch a spark from a ferrocerium rod, very, very easily, but that's one type of scraping. Let's go on to the fatwood. That looks easy enough to do right there. Hopefully I think I'm going to ruin my birch bark, but oh well. As soon as you start on birch on fatwood like this, the smell just goes everywhere and there is no replacement for that smell. I need something else to put this on. If I'm going to light it, I don't want to light it on top of my leather. Just a little piece of bark right there. Okay, that'll do it. All in one place, as long as it doesn't blow away on me. So that's fat wood, fat wood, and now a ferrocerium rod. Oop. And of course, there it is. Now I'm going to stay right on top of this because you can see the wind. All right, I think that's enough in terms of demonstrations. So let's move on to some closing comments. All right, some closing comments for the Nomad EDC built by Work Tough Gear, but designed by Zeke Menacho. I don't know if I showed you Zeke's maker mark here. And of course, Vic's Work Tough maker's mark on that side. So let's just talk about the intended mission and then I'll talk about how it performed in my testing. So obviously the intended mission for this, it's a EDC, everyday carry knife. It is meant as an alternative maybe to a folding knife where when you're looking for something that is a bit more capable in terms of being tougher, able to withstand more a hard use than a folding knife will because a folding knife will never be as strong as a fixed blade knife because of the pivot point. We all know that, of course. This makes a good alternative. It does have some drawbacks, though. It's heavier than just about every folding knife that I carry on me, unless it's a huge one, and I don't carry those in EDC. So you have to have a little bit more, or tolerant of a little bit more weight in your pocket, but if you are, you can do so much more with this knife than you can with virtually any folding knife. The design, this is all about EDC, everyday carry. The slicing capability of that continuous curve combined with the high saber grind and finished off with that micro convex with the reverse tanto for a super strong point, the divot, the way it fits in your hand, it's all about everyday carry. But of course, then again, I'd like to take my knives into the woods. I do carry knives at home, of course, but I like to take my knives into the woods and put them through the testing there. So how did it perform doing bushcraft tasks? Well, as you saw, it's certainly not a splitter. It's not meant for batoning, but three and a half inches, anything small enough, any small, uh, that was probably the outside limit of what I would use it for. That was about one and a half to two inches in diameter, that length of wood. So it gave me just enough tip protruding that I was able to baton it. Realistically, I wouldn't use this knife for that on a regular basis, but if it's the knife you have, it's the knife you use. So it will split. If it will span it, it will split it. There's no question the strength of this thing. It can certainly do the job there. Okay, what about notches? This thing excels at notches. You actually have to be careful not to drive it in too far. The way that continuous curve and the contact point is actually small because of that curve. So in tapping it, it will go a long ways into a piece of wood. You have to be careful. But when it comes up to that tip, and it, despite the fact that it is very, very strong, it's still very, very fine. So you can actually do some very fine carving with the tip of it. So notching, absolutely. We'll do that in spades without question. Obviously, it'll work for forward cutting. 
it'll work for reverse cutting. There's where the limitation started to show to me. Because of the beak here, it was just a little uncomfortable in my hand. So if I don't do a lot of that, then it's not a problem. And I don't do it all the time, so it's not like I need to. And uh, yeah, so that would be the limitation to me. You may find it different because of the size of your hand, but for me, it was just a little bit too small. Again, you can see where it's fitting in the palm of my hand. Uh, yeah, forward slicing, it was really, really, really good. Feather sticking. This is a fun thing to use for feather sticking. When, you start, when you're used to using a Scandinavian grind knife and the way they can bite into the wood very quickly, and then you try to adjust your grip and your angle of your knife to something that is different, it takes a bit of getting used to. And this did. As I mentioned earlier, it did. But once I got used to it, boy, this thing will take some fine, fine curls, aided by that continuous curve. So there is no overstating the value of that curve. It may look a little different, but it, it certainly has a lot of value. You know, I didn't, I'm not a hunter anymore, many, many years since I've done that, but I would say that I wouldn't hesitate to skin with this or work game. Yeah, why not? It's not a dedicated skinner, but it will certainly do the job. And I think that's the whole point of an EDC knife, everyday carry. You're carrying it for any number of tasks, from opening your mail to opening boxes that arrive from Amazon Prime to uh, preparing dinner to who knows what else you're, you're doing with it. And this fulfills that bill and it still works in the wood. Now, one thing I didn't talk about was the carry. Well, I did, how I modified the sheath to make sure I could carry it in the woods. Just a bit heavy for a neck knife. You could carry it if you don't mind the weight, if you've got something that you wear it on the outside of your collar as opposed to next to your skin. You can carry this in that uh, Kydex sheath as a neck knife. Just a bit too heavy for me. I think most people will say a bit too heavy. However, you can do it and it will work perfectly for that. Okay, I think I've gone over the design and how it works as an everyday carry, as well as a bushcraft knife in considerable detail. Let me open it up to you. What are your thoughts on this knife? Because there's no question it is different looking to say the least. Would you purchase this? Would you use it? Do you have it? And do you use it? And what are your thoughts on it? Put all your questions and your comments in the comments section below. Of course, all the information I have in terms of specifications and links to where you can purchase this will be in the video description. But get out and explore and take that path less traveled because it will make all the difference. Bye for now.